This is Fractal's new case, the Fractal North. Instantly interesting because of this giant mesh side panel and also the wood accents on the front. This follows up Fractal's Pop Air case that we reviewed previously. The Pop Air is sort of visual gimmick, if you will, was that it had different color interiors mixed and matched with the exterior. So this follows that up. And the North shares something in common with this as well. This thing is a Geometric Futures Cowboy. That is the name of it. Um, as far as we can tell, they named it that because it has leather on it. They're, they're for Cowboy. Anyway, this also has leather on it. There it is. That's the leather. That's the entirety of it. Uh, but it joins wood on the front. So basically what they're doing here is playing around with non-metal, non-plastic materials. Now, beyond that, beyond just sort of the visual play that they're doing with different materials, there are some interesting practical elements. So one of them is the massive mesh panel. There's a standard glass panel as well, but this is kind of what the mesh option looks like. You can see there's some structural reinforcement there. And internally, immediately we're greeted with an optional fan mount cage that unfortunately is right up against the GPU. So the useful of this will be really limited, but we'll talk about that. This can move actually up here as well. This is a separate panel, and the mesh, if you notice, continues all the way up to the top panel. So they're doing the same sort of density and styling between the side and the top, which is a good fusion of the designs and blending them. And then on the back, the fan cage that we saw next to the GPU blends into this rear uh, ventilated design. So there's a lot going on here with this case. And today we're going to be reviewing all of it, talking about the practicality of some of the decisions they made that were a little more awkwardly placed in this, and some of the better stuff. Before that, this video is brought to you by Arctic and the Liquid Freezer 2 Liquid Coolers, now including an ARGB model in the lineup. The Liquid Freezer series has been a top performer in our benchmark for years now, and Arctic has continually fine-tuned its products even post-launch with things like kits for Ryzen, ARGB fans for new flare, and new radiator sizes. The company also has its brand new MX6 thermal paste on the market now. Learn more at the links in the description below. So for price, this new mid-tower, it's $130, which uh, puts it into the mid-range territory. It doesn't come with a ton of fans for that. It's got two that are equipped, but obviously there's a lot of other stuff going on that is not particularly cheap for Fractal to do. So that's where the money's going, is in all the interesting styling we've looked at. There's a glass panel option that we have back here. Just getting caught on everything right now. So that's the standard glass. Nothing really too special about it. It's just tempered glass sheet. But you'll notice that both of these are reduced width panels. So these are the same size. Neither of them extend and cover the entire side of the case because there's this additional panel that can be separated uh, for full access, but otherwise basically just acts as a shroud with maybe some structural support, not a lot of other function than that. So Fractal, they've really been on their A game for the last couple years now. Actually, we'll go look at some of the other cases they have. So the last couple of years, the main things they've put out that have been effective and some of their competitors too in our hallway of cases, the Fractal Torrent down here, this is a big one, really well received in our testing. We've liked it. We've used it for high-end builds, and I think a lot of other reviewers also liked it. Now, their closest competition is in a little further right here. So this uh, white case is the Lian Li Lancol 3, and that's been a fierce competitor. You can see they've got all the mechanical gimmicks on it that we showed in that review. Gimmick not used here in a negative way, but that's just what it is. Something Lian Li does really well right now is the mechanics of a case. Fractal also has gotten into all this stuff where they've got other variations of the torrent. Uh, it's cool. It's kind of the same thing, just smaller. And other than that, they've got uh, all of these cases with a couple NZXT ones dotted in between. But you can see the sort of evolution of design for Fractal where they discovered mesh. So that was good. That was a big move for Fractal, away from strictly business, solid black front panel, and that was it. They discovered mesh, and then they did a lot of mesh, all of it with also uh, the geometric shape they discovered, which was polygons. So that's Fractal's evolution. Let's go back to the new case, the North. Then we're back to the North, which you can see what they're doing here is different. That's what they're going for, is something that's not... Uh, mesh polygons. So it's good to see that. Fractal is still trying to evolve. The pitch for this case includes the words stylish 
sophisticated and, quote, inspired by Scandinavian interior design. It heavily emphasizes the real wooden front panel. Now, sticking leather on a case or wood is nothing new. We've seen plenty of examples like that, like the Cryorug Taku, the Geometric Future Cowboy, several wooden in-wind cases years ago that never really got mass market, and Lenovo's leather ThinkPad. There was also the real walnut veneer Atari VCS, but we've rarely reviewed these things. The business aesthetic doesn't usually accompany high performance, which excludes a lot of our audience. In this instance, Fractal explicitly bills the North as a, quote, gaming PC case. So we'll judge the performance in the thermal section later on. The front panel is decorated with slats of real wood. It's walnut for the black model or oak for the white model that we have. The slats are glued directly onto plastic and they use plastic as a backing and they have no bearing on structure or function. They don't replace any non-wood material and they're just as much in the way as plastic would be. And there is plastic there too. This isn't like the Q500L Eco Hemp. That's, uh, that's, that's a real product. That's its actual name, by the way. It's a, it's a case made out of cardboard. They claim it decomposes. We asked for one so we could bury it in the yard and test it. And then they took back their offer and didn't send it. So anyway, back to the north. So since the wood on the north is just decorative, it'd actually be pretty easy, relatively speaking, for Fractal to give other cases the North treatment. So we obviously opted for the white model for our review here, and this is accompanied with uh, gray. So it's white and gray. The black model is pretty interesting too. We'll put some images up of it because we don't have one, but that one is accented with sort of a brass color, which is really interesting as well. Both of them would show pretty well in footage, but this gray, it's more of a, a silvery color rather than the typical black interior chassis, so it's just a different color scheme than we typically see. And that black version has a brass accent up in the front I.O. as well, which we don't have on this one, but we do have front I.O. So just to show that off, front I.O. on this case, you've got standard power button, of course, 2, 3.5, so they haven't done the asinine levels of minimalism you would expect from, I don't know, say NZXT. They actually have two ports. There's two USB 3.0, which is good. They're utilizing the full connection, which supports two, and there's a Type-C on there as well. Now, working our way back to the inside of the case here, so this is the access panel, and to get to it, we need to take this out first. Unfortunately, most of our criticisms for this case revolve around this piece right here that I'm removing now. We'll come back to this in more detail. As you can see, it's right up against the GPU. A modern 40 series would be especially problematic because you don't, you really can't bend those 12 volt high power cables. But even with eight pins, we're right up against it. So that's a problem. And then it also doesn't fit there, but we'll come back to that. For the access panel, so this front like quarter panel piece, there is a thumb screw that Patrick tells me is supposed to be captive. Uh, and when I took the panel off for the first time, I noticed it is no longer captive let it be known that that happened before I got to it. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what happened, but apparently it's supposed to be a captive screw. This thing slides back just like that. So pretty clean, uh, unsockets, and when you pull it out, it reveals a pretty standard interior. They've truncated the power supply shroud by cutting it back here. This allows fuller radiator support. If you want to do radiator and fans in the front, it allows you to get all the way down to the bottom instead of having the shroud obstructing uh, the clearance there. And then functionally, as far as this panel goes, I mean, you could just put a full length side panel on it and it'd be a little bit less uh, stuff to work with and you have a normal case. So if you just imagine glass or mesh all the way across, that's an option. We think probably what happened is maybe it's a little bit of they want to do something different and maybe it's also a little bit of uh, manufacturing with this panel in particular because making this mesh all the way to the front, it, thermally it could start actually causing some problems because front intake fans, if they're not going through a radiator, that air is going to start escaping immediately. So having this here in the front will help uh, direct the air straight back into the tower cooler. So there's that upside, but additionally it's probably some manufacturing of structural rigidity like on this. Uh, you see they have all this support. Uh, the longer you make this thing, the more wobbly it's going to be. As far as the fan bracket, so the optional fan bracket can be mounted behind the mesh side panel with space for up to two 140mm fans. The bracket can be mounted at three possible heights, 
and the highest position gives extra space to the GPU, while the lowest position gives extra space to the CPU cooler. We were excited to test this feature, but the compatibility is so limited that we couldn't even do any extra fan tests with it. Total cooler height is limited to 145 millimeters at the highest position with this thing installed. And because most tower coolers are 150 plus, you're mostly constrained to liquid coolers if positioned there. Total GPU depth, including power connectors and PCIe fingers, is limited to 148 millimeters at the lowest position. So when you have taller video cards, which is most of them these days, that cable is not gonna clear the bracket. 148 millimeters is an extremely tight limit, especially with stiff 12 volt high power connectors or liquid cooling tubes to consider. Many tower coolers are incompatible with the upper position. Many GPUs are incompatible with the lower. So if you do wanna use the side intake, it would maybe make the most sense to put it in the highest slot with a downdraft CPU cooler, but then it's unlikely you'd want a less effective downdraft cooler in a case this expensive, and with the vertical clearance for something way better. In the past, we've found side intake fans to actually be one of the most effective fans you can install, like in the older cases, the half X for example, but they've fallen out of fashion with the rise of transparent side panels. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna unsocket our test video card and instead throw in the second most hated video card on the planet right now, which is the 4080. And I'll let you guess which one is the first most hated. So this thing, it's the same size as a 4090FE, and we need to take out it. We need to take out some of these too. Okay, so same size as a 4090 as well. And uh, other than obviously the thickness, putting it much closer to the shroud, there's still enough clearance here to not cause problems, but this is pretty tight. This, we tested it, it's doable. You've got 18 centimeters of clearance from the motherboard to the panel to fit your video card in, in total. That includes the cables. So let's just throw the glass panel on so it's a little more visible. And there'll be a bit of a bend there. So it ends up looking something like this. I've left the front out so we can still get in there. But you can see, you know, it's it's doable. You can, you can route a 12 volt high power. This isn't at a strict, uh, like a really, rough bend, so it's actually pretty loose still down here at the joint. We are well past the strain relief on this cable. So in terms of safety for the cable, we're good. And ultimately it's just up to you to make sure it's socketed all the way anyway. So the key is always just making sure that's in at the, at the joint here on the connector. But there's clearance. So a 40 series, at least of this similar sizing, you could use this as your template if you look online that'll fit. It eats some of the space up here, obviously, in the very front, so you've got that to think about, but uh, otherwise, strictly for the case, it's compatible. Okay, so now we're going to get back to some of the panels. So we already showed this is reinforced. This means that for interior case lighting, you probably want to avoid anything that's too bright or just too much lighting in general, because you will see the reinforcement as soon as you put a backlight on it. Let's do an example. So this is a bit of an extreme. I don't think you're gonna put a studio light in your computer, but uh, that's what we're talking about. So the, the brighter your lights internally, the more you're gonna see this reinforcement show through. If that bothers you, just something to be aware of. But the reinforcement's good because in the standardized wobble testing, you don't get any really bad flex or wobble in this thing. It's not like some of the 0.5 millimeter steel panels. So this one's pretty good overall. Um, the top panel actually continues the same design as uh, the side with the access panel where it doesn't come all the way to the front. You can see it cuts off here and so you've got a separate dividing piece here but the other side is a more standard full steel panel all the way across. So we'll take this off because we're going to talk about cable management soon. So for dust filters now, uh, no dust filter in the top. This is effectively your filter. That's fine. We actually prefer not to have a dust filter because then you're stacking a filter with mesh and it actually ends up just kind of jamming it up. The front does have a filter. Uh, so there's kind of a standard filter in front of the fans and behind the wooden veneer here. And then on the back, we have a standard size power supply filter. So it's not full case length, but there's also only one spot for a fan down there, which is under the power supply. So that makes sense. Nothing special here. The front panel comes off in the standard format. You just pull on the bottom and that's it. 
there's your front filter. And I mean, other than that, uh, this is this is pretty standard stuff. It's just they strap wood to the plastic. So nothing really different there. This is a pretty fat panel, though. Uh, behind it, we've got the two fans that are included. And as for other fan options, so the rear expansion and slot covers are pretty interesting. They use the same whole patterning as the rear fan mount. So it's actually possible to attach an 80 millimeter fan directly to the slot covers. We like to see case manufacturers passively add functionality because in this instance, it's not the most practical place to put a fan, but all Fractal had to do was use some specific hole spacing and then bam, extra fan mount. It's not like it really costs you anymore as a consumer either to get a couple more holes drilled into the case. So the rear of the case is covered in the same hole pattern as we saw earlier. And the PWM fan hub, for example, or anything with standard hole spacing could be mounted anywhere on the rear of the case or on top of the power supply shroud. The downside is that the rear of the case is relatively delicate and it flexes easily without a GPU installed to reinforce it. But that'll be solved once you build the computer. The PWM fan hub is a simple splitter with one PWM input, no discrete power input for it, and four outputs. And it's attached to the case with soldered standoffs so the screws don't directly interact with the PCB at all, which should reduce the risk of damage. As for cable management on the backside, the space is adequate, but it's underwhelming compared to competitors like the NZXT H5 Flow or the Landcool 216. And this is a trait shared with the Torrent. There's two centimeters across most of the tray and a small channel at the front that's three centimeters deep. And cutouts on top of the power supply shroud are partially blocked by ATX power supplies. There are three possible mounts for three and a half inch drives under the power supply shroud with two trays included, but they're a pain in the ass to reach behind the power supply cable clutter. So this we think could have been done better. Fractal has made things a little bit easier by angling the thumb screws outwards, but builds with more than one three and a half inch hard drive honestly just belong in a bigger case. For the rest of the fans, the stock fans are mounted outside the chassis and are flush with the front panel to maximize space in the interior. And this gives the GPU the maximum clearance of 355 millimeters. The fans aren't RGB, so there's not any downside to moving them further back to the inside of the chassis, which would make the screws much easier to access. The front mount is compatible with radiators up to 360 millimeters, but this only applies when mounting radiators inside of the chassis. A 360 mil radiator won't fit on the outside. We don't mean out of the front panel, we just mean outside the chassis and inside the panel. The front mount is still the best option for liquid cooling as the top mount only supports up to 240 mil radiators. And installing a radiator at the top would overlap with the motherboard anyway, and it would limit component clearance to a maximum of 35 millimeters. Okay, so all that said, time to get into some thermal and noise benchmarks. For this, Fractal's product page actually has a line. They say, uh, quote, get a head start on your build with the two included 140 mil aspect fans, which clearly implies that they think you're gonna add some fans. The aspects are rated for 1700 RPM. When we tested ours, they were running at a standard 1630, 1670, so it's within that 10% range that fans are expected to operate in, so that's fine. They should do well enough without any additional help. We wanted to mount fans to this thing, but as we said, it is not compatible in any configuration with our test bench. And we think this is gonna be the case for a lot of you as well. The only way this would most commonly be compatible would be with an AIO or CLC, a liquid cooler on top of the CPU. The problem is putting fans over a liquid cooler doesn't really help. They, they can't hit the CPU. You've got no fins to cool off. So it's mostly cooling the VRM components. And in most modern builds, they just don't need it. It's not really beneficial. I, it's, it's not going to be any different than putting a fan in the back of the case. So that was disappointing. We couldn't really do anything with it, and we don't think most people will be able to either. But, you know, if you've got a build with a shorter video card, cool. It's something for you to use, but not in our testing. Let's get into the charts. The first chart is just some fractal cases. The CPU averaged 45 degrees Celsius above ambient with a combined CPU and GPU workload, which dropped to 43 degrees with the removal of the front panel. These are high static pressure fans behind a lightweight mesh, so the front panel isn't much of an obstacle to airflow even with the fans jammed up against the surface. And the front panel removal, it helps us as a test to search for poor pressure. This is something that Fractal avoided though, and it's a positive for their case design. 
Swapping the mesh panel for a glass one resulted in no meaningful change whatsoever from the original 45 degree average, which isn't as unusual as it might seem because all the active airflow is front to back, and without side intake fans, which we can't fit anyway, the side mesh doesn't have much to do with CPU thermals here. Now that said, we want to remind everyone that thermal testing for cases is heavily dependent on the parts chosen, so it's one of the most variable tests of any product testing we conduct. As such, it's fully possible that other configurations would benefit or even be hindered by this mesh panel. For example, you could have air escaping before it hits the components, or likewise, you could have air entering through the side if there's, say, a negative pressure layout. Comparatively with other cases, 45 degrees is great performance relative to the rest of the chart. It's tied with cases like the Lanquil 2 mesh and the nearly open air in Win Air Force. The Torrent is still Fractal's best performer. It's made at 41 degrees over ambient, but the North compares favorably against Fractal's own similarly priced Mesh Phi 2 Compact, which averaged 47 degrees. The most similar offering from Fractal's usual rival NZXT is the H5 Flow, but the North is even further ahead of its 54 degree average here. Lanley's Lancol 216 keeps its position at the top of the chart, and as a high performance budget case, it'll stay there relatively uncontested. The North has a different market. It's more looks focused. Even though they're kind of close in price, there's a big enough gap that both of them can exist in their own segment. Rendering our usual blender monkey head scene on the CPU brought the average up to a less extreme 36 degrees Celsius above ambient, which ties the H5 flow in the absence of GPU heat, as well as the Mesh Phi 2 Compact. The Lancol 216 maintains its lead at 33 degrees though. Our standardized fan test allows us to judge case airflow independently from stock fans by using the same set of Noctua fans in each case. There's two 140mm intake fans and one 120mm exhaust. In the instance of the Fractal North, that may not be an improvement over the stock setup because the two stock 140mm intake fans are unusually high RPM. Swapping to the standardized kit did improve CPU average temperature just outside of variance with a new average of 44 degrees Celsius over ambient. Fractal stock fans here have improved immensely since the days of the original Meshify C. Predictably, running the Aspect 140s at their maximum speed, or close to 1700 RPM, made the North one of the loudest cases we've measured, landing it right behind the torrent at 49.9 dBA. Getting them down to our 36 dBA noise normalized threshold required reducing the speed to 50%. But when we were testing this case, if you run these fans from non-PWM headers, then the tack signal dropped once they were below 50%. This didn't affect the functionality, and it didn't happen when using the PWM headers, as you should use, but we haven't seen this behavior before at just 50% speed. That's too high for this kind of fall off, typically. We were able to verify speeds, though, with an external tack, and again, you can just use PWM, and you should. At the reduced fan speeds, though, the CPU averaged 48 degrees above ambient, up from the original 45 degree average, which makes sense because they're quieter now, and there's a similar increase in GPU thermals. That CPU average puts the North within error of the Fractal Meshify 2 Compact at 49 degrees and far ahead of the NZXT H5 Flow's 56 degree average. But once again, the 216 remains at the top of the chart. Working on this case has mostly made us wonder where the hell Inwin has been. It's been a long time since Inwin has produced uh, like really mainstream, wildly popular cases. They still make stuff, but they were trying to do this wood thing I think before pretty much anyone else. I remember covering it at a trade show year, like probably four or five years ago, and it was wildly popular, but it just seemed to fall flat. So we don't, this is like the perfect in-win style case, but they're not here. Fractal is. So um, Fractal at this point, they are competing right now mostly with NZXT. NZXT's flow series seems to have taken that spot as the competitor in this price class where Inwin probably should be with something other than an 805. So the North as a case, we think the North is a competent, compact mid-tower that at its core feels like it should typically fall in the $90 to $110 price range right alongside the H5 Flow. However, its unique appearance and its stock fans elevate it and make the $130 MSRP palatable. There are better price to performance options out there for those who don't care about the oak or the walnut look, notably the Lancol 216 if you only care about performance to price, 
but the North is a slam dunk alternative to Fractal's own Mesh Phi 2 Compact at approximately the same price, performance, and size. The North's Mesh side panel also has the potential to add a lot of airflow, but only if side-mounted fans are installed, which is tricky with limited space and compatibility. So we're impressed with how the North has managed to combine some business-like aesthetic, like Fractal's older style, with performance. They've done it in a way that you know, a lot of times when they start trying to combine business and performance, it just comes across as incredibly pretentious to the performance audience and kind of weird to the business audience. So I think Fractal has found a good balance here. And uh, Patrick and I working on this case both think this one is well worth the consideration in its price class. It's like we said, it's about 20, 30 bucks more expensive than a strict no frills competitor would be. But it has frills. So there's your 20 or 30 dollars. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. As always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to grab a shirt like this one or patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And we'll see you all next time.